Paula Radcliffe was born on 17th of December 1973 in Davenham near Northwich, Cheshire. Despite suffering from asthma and anemia, she took up running at the age of seven, influenced by her father, who was a keen amateur marathon runner. During her father's training jogs in the woods, Radcliffe and her brother would often run with him for a mile or two. At the age of 10, Radcliffe, accompanied by her father, watched Ingrid Christiansen run in the London Marathon, inspiring her to become an athlete. When Radcliffe was age 12, the family moved to Oakley, Bedfordshire, and she became a member of Bedford and County Athletics Club. Her joining the club coincided with a talented and dedicated coach, Alex Stanton, and his wife, Rosemary, who are still fulfilling that role in her professional career, building the women's and girls' sections into one of the strongest in the country. Her first race at the national level occurred at the age of 12 in 1986, when she secured the 299th position out of around 600 participants in the girls' race of the English school's cross-country championships. One year later, she improved her performance, finishing fourth in the same race. In 1992, her professional career took off when she won the World Cross-Country Championships, defeating Kenyan runner Gatewami. Paula showcased her talent in cross-country events, earning a remarkable record of three gold, three silver, and two bronze medals at the World Cross-Country Championships from 1992 to 2002. Simultaneously, during this period, she also focused on track events from 3,000 to 10,000 meters races, securing a silver medal in the 10,000 meters race at the 1999 World Outdoor Championship in Seville. Her focus on road races began in the year 2000 when she secured a gold medal at the World Half Marathon Championship in Mexico, followed by additional gold medals in 2001 and 2003. In 2002, she made her marathon debut at the London Marathon, achieving the second fastest marathon time in history with two hours, 18 minutes and 55 seconds. Later that year, she broke the world record with a time of two hours, 17 minutes and 18 seconds at the Chicago Marathon. And in 2003, she set another world record of two hours, 15 minutes and 25 seconds at the London Marathon. In February 2003, Radcliffe set the world's best time for the road 10 kilometers, completing it in 30 minutes and 21 seconds. Additionally, she ran a half marathon world record of one hour, five minutes and 40 seconds in the same year. Paula began her athletic journey at the age of 11, participating in group training sessions twice a week until the age of 16 in 1993, she transitioned to training twice a day, achieving a notable time of 8 minutes and 51 seconds over 3,000 meters with one exercise per day. In preparation for the 1995 season, Paula started experimenting with altitude training. She has been collaborating with her coach, Alex Stanton, since 1986. Stanton gradually built the training program each year, increasing volume, intensity, and introducing new workouts. By 1997, Paula was averaging 150 to 160 kilometers per week, reaching 180 to 200 kilometers per week in 2001 and up to 260 kilometers per week in 2002 when she transitioned to the marathon. Stanton relied on a scientific method incorporating physiological data from lab tests conducted at least twice a year. Training zones for endurance workouts were based on heart rate rather than actual training paces. Winter and summer training for Paula included track, road, and grass sessions. In winter, she trained twice weekly on grass, and in the summer, she focused on the track two times a week. Paula also gained experience with replacement training, incorporating activities like aqua jogging and cross-country skiing into her routine. Altitude training became an integral part of Paula's training program when she started experimenting with it in 1995. She frequently trains in various high-altitude locations, including font Romeu in France before the cross-country season and Albuquerque in the USA before the track and summer season. Additionally, she incorporates E10 in Kenya, 
into her routine for marathon preparation. Paula leverages altitude training to enhance endurance and maximize training volume in each cycle. To complement her primary program, she integrates cross-training activities such as hiking and long-distance skiing. Here are some key important points related to Paula's altitude training. In 1995, Paula dedicated five months to altitude training in font France, situated at an elevation of 1,800 to 2,200 meters above sea level. Her stay spanned from the beginning of April to the start of August. During this period, she completed three training blocks interspersed with intermediate competition phases in flatlands, showcasing her prowess with two standout performances over 1,500 and 5,000 meters. Following another three weeks of altitude training, Paula traveled to Gothenburg two weeks before the World Championships. Despite the rigorous preparation, she finished in fifth place at the event. Since 1997, Paula has continued to include high-altitude stays with visits to Albuquerque, where the climate is typically warmer, drier, and sunnier. Here are two weeks of altitude training in Albuquerque in two different years. Paula incorporates distances of varying lengths from 600 to 1,000 meters in track exercises, covering up to eight kilometers of pace around three minutes per kilometer. In endurance type of running, she avoids running at a very slow pace and typically faces difficulties with it. Her endurance runs on the track range between six and 10 kilometers or over 45, 50 minutes, where her pulse reaches approximately 195 beats per minute at the end indicating a speed faster than three minutes per kilometer. Her maximum pulse rate is 200 beats per minute. Easy runs maintain a heart rate around 160 beats per minute, or less than four minutes per kilometer, with her longest run lasting one hour and 40 minutes. Most of the time, the long distance runs fall within the 50 to 60 minute range. On the track, as well as during five by six and a half minutes, repetitions and hill runs, she trains in the heart rate range between 185 to 195 beats per minute, occasionally reaching 200 beats. During a 10 kilometers run at altitude on the track, her lactate value was around five millimoles in the middle of the run and reached 9.4 millimoles at the end. The focus of the 10 kilometers running training remains speed oriented. Tempo runs are associated with four to five millimoles of lactate. Paula emphasizes, today the quality gives me the strength to handle a higher quantity in training and to run fast two or three competitions in a short period of time. Paula occasionally incorporates Bondarenko track sessions into each phase of her training preparation. The session is taken from Olga Bondarenko the 1988 10,000 meters Olympic gold medalist. It involves the following sequence, performed non-stop. Paula completed one of Bondarenko's sessions in 2004 in Limerick as follows. After securing a mere third place in Belfast, trailing behind the seemingly unbeatable Gate Wami, Paula faced considerable criticism, with some suggesting she had trained too hard. In response, she chose to intensify her training even further and began to train harder. Here is a typical challenging week as she prepared for 1999 World Championships in Seville. Since the winter of 1999, Paula has incorporated specialized strength training 
under the guidance of a strength trainer. Unlike before, where her focus was on machine-based, endurance-oriented exercises, the emphasis now is on building strength and speed, typically involving three sets of eight or three sets of six repetitions per exercise. These exercises include work with dumbbells, squats, and arm exercises. Up to two weeks before championships, she engages in dumbbell exercises twice a week and includes jumping exercises once a week. Here is her typical weight training program. The idea is to build the muscles up, she explains. Once I've done that, I shall come down to doing the plyometrics and weights two or three times a week. Paula is getting into plyometrics for the first time in her career in a bid to find that extra 1% that will make her a realistic contender for the 10,000 mentor gold medal at the Sydney Olympics. After Sydney Olympic, on her preparation period for the next season, her physiotherapist Gerard Hartman outlining the approach they took with Paula. Paula runs twice a day, and that may account for 1.5 to 2 hours of her day. On top of that, she is spending between another 2 and 5 hours between her treatments, her stretching routine, her plyometrics, her core stability, and her strength training. Paula's weight training program became more sophisticated over the years, and she improved her leg strength and power. For example, her vertical jump test performance improved from 29 centimeters in 1996 to 38 centimeters in 2003. Paula now squats, quite heavy as well, between 150 to 160 pounds. A barbell program is the best way to get strong legs, a strong back, strong upper body, and a strong core. The stronger you are, the easier it is to do athletic things. It is no different to what Sebastian Coe did with the help from his father and coach George Gandhi many years ago. Coe was not the biggest of athletes, but they developed him into an athlete. He did not just run, he did dynamic exercises, plyometric exercises, strength exercises, squats, lunges, and heavy weight sessions. We brought this approach to Paula Radcliffe's training program after the Olympic Games and it was less than a year later that we saw she won her first world title. In 2002, Paula Radcliffe transitioned to marathon running and immediately triumphed in her debut at the London Marathon, setting a world's best time for a women's only race. Her weekly training regimen involves covering about 160 miles with a significant portion dedicated to cross training and high intensity paces often incorporating two to three sessions per day. Over her career, Paula's weekly training volume has increased, reaching between 120 and 160 miles during full marathon training. Despite the increase, she prioritizes training quality over quantity. Her steady continuous running, a major component of her weekly mileage, maintains a pace between 3 minutes 20 seconds and 3 minutes 40 seconds per kilometer. Paula emphasizes rest when fatigued rather than compromising the intensity of a session. Regular tempo running, close to her lactic turning point, is another crucial element, around 5 minutes per mile or 3 minutes 8 seconds per kilometer. Her weekly program includes 1 to 2 high-intensity interval or repetition sessions, requiring 95 to 100% VO2 max and 2 weight training sessions. In her preparation period for the marathon, Paula typically starts her day around 8 a.m., fueling up with an energy bar and a drink before heading out for training. Her sessions vary from track work to road repetitions, focusing on marathon conditions. A tempo run at marathon pace for over an hour is a common part of her routine. After covering about 12 to 15 miles, she returns for an ice bath and a substantial mid-morning breakfast. A gym session follows, and she takes a nap between 2 and 4 p.m. Her final run of the day is an easy hour-long local run. The total daily workout lasts approximately five hours. Paula maintains a disciplined routine, 
refraining from eating after 8 p.m. and usually going to bed by 10 or half past. She incorporates rest every eighth day and takes three weeks off at the end of both the summer and winter seasons. Here is Paula training structure and heart rate zones. Finally, here is Paula's training program before breaking the world record at the London Marathon. As we conclude part one of Paula Radcliffe's training journey, we hope you've gained valuable insights into her dedication and regimen. If you found this information inspiring and informative, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more content. Your support fuels our commitment to bringing you engaging insights into the world of athletics. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey.